Should my agency fly under Part 107 or under a Certificate of Authorization? That is by far the most frequently asked question that I get when a public safety agency client calls me asking us for advice. Because we sell equipment, we do training, and we do complete program development, and we have a lot to say on that subject, so let's talk about a lot of the aspects that go into that. With that said, there's a lot of agencies out there that are, that are understanding that drones are here to stay. They're wanting to start off with, even if it's small in nature, a small, less expensive drone with maybe one or two or three operators at a small agency, but a lot of people don't know necessarily where to start or what the differences between all of these factors are. So let's go over them one at a time. So the first thing is the FAA came out with something called a Certificate of Authorization. That's also short for a COA. Now, a Certificate of Authorization is really tailor-made very well for public safety. There's two different types of COAs to get. We don't want to get into necessarily those details, but let's just go talk about in generalities some of the benefits that you can do. For starters, if your operators and your pilots fly exclusively under the COA, then you do not have to, or your officers are not required to get that Part 107 training. That means they don't have to pay the extra, or your department doesn't have to pay for their test, and they don't have to spend all that extra time on getting that license. Now, what the FAA wants to do is they want to see that the agency has their own self-training program that they've already implemented or are implementing. Now, does that sound too good? Well, actually, there is no such thing as a free lunch. On the COA process, you have to actually explain in detail your training program, how your officers are getting trained, and then once you have to show that your officers are trained, then your COA will allow you to fly in and use that COA fully functional. The FAA wants all agencies to be able to do monthly reports for all flights flown under that certificate of authorization. That includes all the details of the flight from latitude, longitude, maximum height, flight duration, the aircraft used, the pilot, all that stuff has to be summarized for every single flight. Another downside of the certificate of authorization is it often is a large convoluted application process that takes a lot of time. And the FAA may require you to go back and forth and resubmit the application several times if they find issues with it. So just want to be aware that it's, you know, it can be a bit time consuming. What are the good and the bad with Part 107? Well, like I mentioned, the test costs $160 currently right now and is going up to $180. Each officer is probably going to be required to put in about 16 to 20 hours of study time before they'll be ready to take that test. The good side of things though is that if you've run exclusively under 107, then you don't have to worry about any monthly reports or that extra administrative time that is required. So there are trade-offs to both. What do we recommend? Well, for many agencies, if you're an agency where you may be near a controlled tower to airport that may, you may need to be flying very close to that controlled tower airport, I would say within about close to a half a mile, give or take a little more, or you feel that your drone is going to be needed to fly directly over people in, in case of an emergency, then Part 107 is not going to be that option because as of right now, flying directly over people with a large aircraft like a Matrice or a Mavic is not very easy to get. And especially for public safety, you're not going to get it very quickly. So what we recommend is to use a combination of both especially if you're an agency that feels that you're going to need to fly your drone directly over people in an emergency type of situation or you're close by near a controlled tower to airport where you're not going to be able to get authorization from the FAA in a very quick manner. Those are the reasons why you should absolutely want to go ahead and at least apply for the COA and have it in your back pocket as needed. So with that said, if you have any questions, please feel free 
Give me a call. I'll be glad to talk and step you through this entire process one step at a time. I know it can be very daunting and a little overwhelming at times, but we are here for everybody. So with that said, thanks again. Stay safe out there. We'll talk to you soon.